Yes, and good afternoon. And good afternoon, everybody. My name is uh, Joseph Malik. I am a certified financial planner with EY. Among the uh, se several engagements that I uh, deal with are members of the pension board. And uh, I get great pleasure working with uh, folks on this particular engagement. And with that, let's go ahead and move on to uh, today's presentation. EY is a professional service firm in the area of tax, auditing, and consulting. Employee, the Employee Financial Services Group offers financial education to employees at no cost to you. That enables you to make be better understand, or yeah, let me try that again. That enables you to better understand your financial situation, enable you to make uh, informed decisions. EY does not sell financial products. EY is not a planned fiduciary. Keep in mind that today's uh, workshop is part of a larger program of financial guidance being offered to you. So let me give you a moment of a, a brief overview on that. Uh, first of all, the uh, one of the aspects is the Navigate Planner line where you can speak with a live financial planner. No cost to employees, no sales. Uh, employees can call as often as they wish. We offer a full range of services from answering one-off questions to providing comprehensive financial planning services. Another leg of the uh, chair is the EY Navigate Digital. For that, registration is required. That uh, gains you access to articles, calculators, tools, and resources. It provides the ability to upload completed questionnaires and download reports. There's a secure mailbox where you can correspond with your uh, planner. And there is an app available for download on Google Play or the Apple Store. Uh, third prong to the chair is the EY Navigate Group Learning, where you register on EY Navigate uh, Digital. There's a new topic every month, uh, four sessions per month, space is limited, so uh, we do recommend you sign up early. There are replays available on the website the following month. Face-to-face -face workshops may also be available at your location throughout the year, so be on the lookout for our communications. To help you improve upon your finances, we'll be suggesting some action steps uh, to take after today's workshop. The value of this or any financial seminar really comes from how you actually use the information provided and the knowledge gained. We hope you will make this uh, goal of taking action easy for you by using a personal action plan. Elements of the action plan would be a series of specific steps, a time frame in which to achieve those steps. And throughout this session, we'll be highlighting some specific action steps that you should consider for your own personal action plan. The, uh, you, of course, will have a better chance of following through if you write it down. And the uh, first step in investment planning process is to set your financial goals. Uh, towards that end, uh, lay out all the different goals you are saving and investing for and determine your investor profile, whether it be conservative, moderate, or aggressive for each goal. The next step would be the time horizon, uh, which is the length of time until the goal. The longer the time horizon, the more aggressive you generally can be, meaning a higher percentage in stocks uh, within your investment mix. In general, long term would be a period of 10 or more years. Intermediate term would be something in the five to 10 year horizon and short term, uh, anything from immediate to about five years. Next piece of that particular puzzle will be risk tolerance. How do you feel about risk? Are you more risk averse? or are you more of a risk taker? Remember that there is a risk and reward trade-off involved in this. The more risk means more reward. The asset allocation tool on eWay Navigate Digital can help you determine your tolerance for risk. Various levels of risk can be achieved through different combinations of stocks and bonds. Uh, another piece of the puzzle becomes your required return. This would be the return needed to reach your retirement goals. Generally, the higher your required return, the more aggressive you need to be to reach it. And generally, you should take on the least amount of risk possible that still helps you achieve your goal. Uh, 
there will you also generally be the requirement for assistance from a financial planner to help uh, help you determine and keep track of things. And that's a place where reaching out to us through the financial planner line can get you access to myself and the other planners on the engagement to help keep you on track or help you even develop the track if uh, if uh, all you know is I want to achieve this, but I'm really not sure I know how we want to uh, how I want to or need to go about that. Next, uh, it helps to understand uh, your basic investment choices or the asset classes. So, moving on to that, those would include uh, cash and its equivalents. Examples here would be a savings or a checking account, a money market account, CDs or t uh, treasury bills. Characteristically, these would pay current income, generally less than two years to maturity, maintains the principal, very little protection against uh, inflation. As we move our way up the uh, risk scale, then that leads us into fixed income, which is generally considered bonds. Examples here would be T-notes and bonds, corporate bonds, municipal bonds, bond mutual funds characteristic here is a bond is debt, an IOU or a loan if you prefer. It pays current income, generally uh, two or more years to maturity. The principal will fluctuate. And of course you have credit risk and uh, interest risk uh, accounting for uh, changes in the debt markets. As we continue up the scale, that leads us into equities or stocks. Examples here would be U.S. large cap stocks, U.S. Uh, big cap or small cap stocks, uh, combinations of uh, U.S. and international stocks, uh, growth or value stocks, and uh, all of these would be available to you through various mutual funds and exchange traded funds, depending on the investment vehicles that you are uh, using. Characteristic here would be a stock is ownership in a business. So you share in the profits and the growths. Uh, some, st some stocks may pay current income in the form of dividends. And you, of course, will always have market and investment risk depending on the ins and outs of uh, how uh, that particular business is favored in uh, the current economic environment. Now, let's go ahead and move on to the historical returns of these asset classes to give you a better understanding of how they behave. Looking at longer term returns, we see that stocks outperform cash and bonds over the long term. Stocks provide greater protection against inflation, but will always have a bumpier ride. Uh, small cap stocks have the highest long term average return, but also notice uh, in the graph that the uh, small caps. Uh, will have added volatility for that particular uh, asset class, recognizing these are smaller companies that perhaps don't have the same wherewithal to uh, to work their way through challenging times that a larger, more established company does. Cash will barely outpace inflation and bonds offer little protection from inflation as well. But in exchange for that, they do offer an amount of stability. So rather than having your eggs all in one basket, it does make sense to divide your money among the asset classes. Towards that end, now we're gonna work our way into the idea of asset allocation. In this particular case, for a retirement uh, accumulation purpose, it makes little sense to hold cash in your portfolio. When you are near or enter retirement, holding at least some cash makes some sense to include uh, at that particular point in time. Some studies have shown that asset allocation plays the biggest role in determining your investment returns, more than the specific investments you choose or the timing of when you buy or sell investments. You wanna make sure that you spend sufficient time developing an appropriate asset allocation before making any uh, investment decisions. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at a chart to perhaps uh, uh, better understand the importance of asset allocation. By having some of your money in the various asset classes, you will reduce the overall risk of your portfolio. In this example, you can see that 
many years, international stocks have had the uh, highest annual returns. There are also just a few years in which they have had the lowest returns, giving them a bumpy ride. Meanwhile, a diversified uh, uh, mix of stocks characterized by the gray boxes, as you take a look at this particular chart, uh, will never be the best performer, but it's also never the worst, giving it a smoother ride than the international stocks. Looking at the chart, it would be easy to assume that international stocks have uh, outperformed the diversified portfolio. But if we delve a little bit deeper, what we will uh, actually find is if you had invested $100 into each portfolio at the beginning of 2001 and, and simply left it there for the next 20 years, you would have had $241 in the portfolio of international stocks. Uh, a handsome return, not bad, but uh, when you compare it to the diversified portfolio, that not only gave you the smoother ride, it also left you with $376, which is about 56% more than uh, the portfolio of international stocks. The compounded annual return for the international stock portfolio over that time horizon was about 4.5%. The diversified was 6.85%. So now that we have a bit of an understanding of asset allocation, you're probably wondering what investment mix is right for you. So moving on to the next slide, um, we will see that the plan for, uh, plan for retirement goal on EY Navigate has an asset allocation tool invest, or embedded in it. You will need to indic indicate your time horizon for the accumulation and the distribution phases, then answer a question about your risk tolerance. That leads you to a screen that we see right here. And in this particular example of uh, eight models that we use for discussion, this particular one happens to show uh, model five, which is a uh, rather moderate mix. Um, working to, by yourself or working with a, in conjunction with your EY planner, we can fine tune this, recognize that uh, off of the questions of your time horizon, as well as uh, your overall risk tolerance, uh, that can give a good starting point, but we could always add some polish and in having a conversation with your EY planner, we can perhaps fine tune that for someone who perhaps is a little bit more comfortable taking a hair less or a smidge more risk by going through the metrics in a little bit more detail so that we can get a much more tailored fit for your particular purpose. Once again, uh, you could end up having several different asset allocations, one for retirement generally being your uh, longest uh, time horizon. But let's say that uh, you're also of an age where you are still saving for getting uh, some children through college. That might be a second goal that you're uh, saving for that would have a shorter time frame or fuse on. And it's completely appropriate that, that uh, might have a secondary asset allocation for it appropriate to that particular uh, time horizon. Now, once you uh, get the idea of the right asset allocation, the next step would be to uh, select your way through the uh, mix of investments. Towards that end, the tool will ask you to select an investment approach. And when we do that, that will lead to a choice towards hands-off uh, or a hands-on type uh, environment. I, I, in my conversations, I tend to uh, redefine those a little bit. I tend to refer to hands-off as more of an off-the-rack type solution and hands-on being a more customized or a more tailored solution, recognizing that sometimes people see that hands-off and hands-on and they tend to set, take slightly more extreme positions than what, what's really intended. With the hands-off uh, within the funds that you have available within the uh, pension boards uh, uh, 
plan, yeah, that would be guiding you towards the target annuitization date funds. Whereas when we deal with the more hands-on solution, we would be dealing with other funds in the mix where we could create a more exact uh, mix of investments for you. Uh, not terribly unlike if you uh, were to go to a, a dressmaker or a suit maker who takes your measurements and then make sure that they uh, take those measurements to the bolts of cloth and creates that garment exactly to your dimensions rather than having something that has to be uh, altered. Uh, with that said, let's go ahead and take a little bit of a look into the uh, mix of investments and uh, that will reiterate the uh, various funds that are available. In the top half, we see the target annuization funds, which are designed to be that hands-off solution. And the normal fit is the date where it would be closest to when you're going to be retiring. And within that, there's automatically an off-the-rack fit of a mix of fixed income and U.S. large cap uh, equities that uh, will get a little bit more uh, conservative over time as we get closer to the goal. When we take a look at the sustainable uh, balanced fund, that has a in-between type philosophy. It is designed to be always a 40-60 mix, 40% fixed income, 60% bonds. Uh, and it is uh, very appropriate for a moderate investor who doesn't necessarily, who wants a hands-off solution, doesn't want to be on a glide path as they get closer to retirement. As we move down the list into the uh, fix, uh, fixed income uh, category with the bond fund, the equity fund, and the global sustainability index fund, these are the funds that we would use to create a very tailored mix of investments uh, for, for your mix. And lastly, the, uh, the uh, plan does offer a stable value fund. And in many cases, uh, members who are getting close to retirement might take the amount that they are getting ready to annuitize. And in the last uh, period of time before they annuitize, might actually move to the stable value fund with the idea of reducing the risk of a sudden market downturn uh, affecting their retirement. If we uh, continue on to the uh, next page, uh, we uh, also deal with the idea of uh, rebalancing. If you use a target date fund or the balanced fund, you don't have to worry about this. This is automatically done for you. But if you do select the more tailored approach, your asset allocation will drift uh, over time. I can too, if you're uh, driving down uh, a, an interstate and uh, you, you get a little bit uh, a bit of road days, you start drifting out of your lane. By rebalancing, we guide you back into your lane so that you're as efficiently as possible continuing on uh, going forward. So uh, with that particular drift, we uh, might say that uh, uh, after starting with a 4060, that uh, because stocks have been very successful, they've gone up to 80%. So by going ahead and doing the rebalance, is how we drift our way back into our lane as, uh, as I was discussing here. So what do we go, want to go ahead and do from here? Um, this will lead to the idea of what three actions are you willing to commit to today uh, following this workshop? Uh, particular uh, scenarios would be, you want to set some financial goals and determine the time horizons for those. Do you need to determine your investor profile? Do you want to select and do you need to select an appropriate asset allocation? Uh, do you need to maybe back off a little bit more and select an investment approach? Review your investment options. Set reminders to rebalance your portfolio. Uh, register on EY, uh, navigate digital and download your app? Or do you perhaps need to uh, reach out to EY and schedule time with, uh, with one of our planners? Uh, hopefully you found this uh, presentation informative and useful. 
uh, to help ensure you in meeting uh, your needs, EY and your employer will requ request that you complete a short survey. Uh, and the, uh, um, at this particular point, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you, Joseph. Um, if anyone has any questions, you could unmute yourself or just type them in the chat now. Not all at once. <laughs> um, okay. Well, Either um, I was very thorough or somewhat intimidating. Hopefully <laughs> thorough. Hopefully thorough. Yes. Um, all right. Well, and and uh, so I, Joe, so I appreciate the presentation and everyone for uh, you know your attention um, and for participating today. If you have any questions, uh, if you want to engage with uh, EMY Financial Planner. Um, the information um, is on, on the numbers on the, the previous site, uh, the previous slide there, and um, it's also on our on our website, um, pbucc.org. So, um, again, uh, thank you so much for for participating today, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.